Going back to Pink Flamingo, by the way, and reminding you of my good mate, uh, Paul, what he did is he created a, um, or we created, um, some kind of a, a, a sheet. We're basically measuring um, value. And in this electronic system, I won't tell you which one, but there's many out there. Uh, we started to track employee value, efficiency value, regulatory value, customer value, user value, bloody, bloody, blah, right? On this, on this magnum aureus chart. I'm hoping they've probably changed it now anyway. And all you do is every sprint, right? So if this is sprint one or sprint two, et cetera, whatever those dates are, you put your dates in there and you just collect it. And if, if, if three of your stories, right, done employee value, you put on three, one done efficiency, two done regulatory, and you basically come out with some form of a pie chart like this. And it shows you the slices of what value you delivered per unit of time. And that could be, for example, you know, employees, that's commercial, um, that's probably, you know, uh, risk, Risk is probably someone drowning, right? Maybe, I don't know, something like that, right? Someone drowning and saying, help, help. I don't know. Uh, so this organ or the, the pink flamingo strategy evolved from only just looking at the flow metrics, but actually starting to look at this thing called value. And uh, even that wasn't good enough, right? We were thinking, actually, even that's not good enough. We're still collecting delivery, right? Because we're not actually saying what the value is. We're just saying that this is 10 of these items and it's four of these items and it's two of these items, still not good enough. What do we do? So we went on this like a, this, this crusade, right? Uh, or this exodus, if you, if you will. And we, we had to find our, our, our next movement, right? Of where, that, of where that path might take us. And interestingly, we came across many, you know, many, many people, many tribes, you could say, right? about people that were doing some form of metric stuff, right? Of course, M, metrics are M, right? <laughs> and uh, we would go to this, this group, we'd go to this group and they would be doing some metric stuff, maybe doing some metric stuff. And then we eventually discovered that not many people are doing this thing called value, right? They actually don't even know what it is half the time. And so we started on this journey, or they started on this journey to look at um, uh, creating some form of qualitative, you know, video, you know, video or blog, you know, or even just uh, an update every month. Uh, a bit like OKRs, right? How you have OKRs and OKRs, you might have an OKR, which is objective key result. An objective is almost differentiated between the key result and you monitor that, you know, every three months, right? And you find out after three months, how you're doing, right? And you, and you find out if you're going better or worse, right? So what they started doing is started to do some qualitative uh, value-based statements to so say, right, team name or product name, product team name and what value did he actually deliver and mention it in a qualifiable way you know we you know the result was x these are the results and therefore the results started to get captured and then we had like a video diary and people actually blog about how awesome the product is or how bad the product is um or maybe how bad the product is right or how good the product is um and that started to be a thing so but it's still very confusing and we never actually got to the bottom of it. And uh, I'm curious to know what he did with it actually. So, so there you go. So you've got delivery metrics and you've got what I think is the missing dimension is the seventh dimension of value in and of itself is why are we not measuring this thing? Why are there not enough really good tools? Maybe there are, if you do know of any, please let me know about measuring value in and of itself. And maybe we can never do that. A good friend of mine, Jose Casal, who is a phenomenal Kanban trainer and scrum trainer, he speaks about, well, we, Haru, we will never know the value, right? Value is almost a guesstimate. It's a pure estimation. We never know how much the stock market is going to fall. We never know uh, what the outcome is going to be. What we can do, though, is we can be experimental, right? We can be experimental. And uh, this is what I also learned from Paul as well and from his team, which is we need to focus on an experimental mindset of metrics. And I believe um, recently Barry Overeem, who has written the book about, um, yeah, UX might well have some metrics. You're absolutely right, Michael, absolutely right. Um, there's a mention about, about other metrics as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, so, so one of the things that, um, that really also, you know, just to remind myself or remind ourselves is that just because you've got these flow metrics, that may not be good enough. It's just not good enough, right? We have to look at other things. 
And maybe even the value metrics is not good enough. Maybe there's an eighth dimension. And the eighth dimension, I believe, is, uh, is human beings themselves. Where's the metrics for that, right? Where's that collaboration metrics? And what I really want to share with you, I'm going to try to dig it out if I can, because Barry Overham has only just published this a few days ago. I saw it on LinkedIn or something. And it's phenomenal. It's called the Scrum Cultural Index. And it shows you the index of how zombie scrum you are, right? <laughs> you know, um, from, from communication patterns to decision making. And therefore, I think the, the eighth dimension, or maybe it's not even an eighth dimension, maybe it's a different quadrant altogether, is, is collaboration and interaction of human beings. How are we actually communicating with each other? How are decisions being delegated to the, to the lowest form possible, right? As um, uh, Captain David Marquette speaks about in turning the ship around. You know, about delegating authority, you know, to the lowest point uh, in the in the chain, right? Where the information is, you know, wherever the authority needs to be, the information needs to be there, right? We don't want to have command and control structures like it was in Santa Fe, how how David Marquette speaks about. Those who even read it, have a look at the book. Um, <laughs>